hip, hip, hooray for DNA. It provides the key to the plans for making everything in you and me. Let's say there were two twins, Samantha and Allison. If I were to ask you, are these two twins exactly alike? Are they identical? You might say, well, there they are in many ways, but they do have the differences. But then the question comes, why do they have the differences? Because if they're identical twins, I mean, they have they share the same DNA. They have the identical DNA, shared genes, the identical DNA. So why would they be still different if they have the identical DNA, the same genes? And that's what we're going to discuss in this video, because we're going to talk about what actually can also influence behavior or appearance apart from the genes. I'll read the actual point. It says, outline ways in which the environment may affect the expression of a gene in an individual. So what we have to talk about is what the environment can do to the phenotype, and what the phenotype is is the appearance, which could be behavior or anything else, what the environment can do to the phenotype, looks, behavior, anything like that, that is not related to purely to the genes, how the genes and the environment mix. So the actual a couple examples that we'll give, because it says in the name ways in which, so the first one is nutrition. And this is an actual interesting photo here, and this is actually a armor from the medieval ages. Now it looks pretty cool. The funny thing is if you were to put a human, a normal average sized male next to this photo, you'd find that the average normal sized male would be quite a bit bigger. It might be this tall. And it's not, not, to, be a, not to be a drawing of a decent look, uh, looking male, it's just meant to be a drawing, of comparing the size. This might be a normal male, and this might be an armor of a medieval knight. And what I see realize is they're quite a bit shorter. Now, how could they be shorter? They have the same genes. We're, we're very similar gene-wise. We're very similar now than we were 500 years ago. There's no big difference at all. But their height is significantly shorter. We've known we've increased our height consistently over the last couple hundred years. And one of the reasons why is proper nutrition. Because food, especially early on, food encourages growth. So the more food we have, to a certain degree, the more food we have, the better we grow. And in the medieval ages, obviously there was a big shortage of food, there was not as much food as we have nowadays. So that meant their maximum potential. So I'll write the potential height. This is what the genes allow it to do, these potential height. was not reached by the actual knights because they didn't get enough food to eat to, to reach that potential height. So their genes allowed for them to grow to a certain height but because their environment, their food environment, wasn't as high as it should have been, they didn't reach that potential height. And that's one good example of how nutrition, which is an environmental factor, can affect our genes, or our expression of our genes. Right? So expression, if it's fully expressed, that means it's going to be a certain, that, that same height as this here, but just didn't get fully expressed because it didn't have enough food to be fully expressed, and therefore the nights were quite a bit shorter. Another example would be the family environment. And we know that, for example, education education can have a huge influence on a person. And if you have one family that encourages education compared to another family that doesn't encourage education, the actual genes of that individual, so the genes in terms of you know, IQ or of general knowledge capabilities, so IQ or general potential might be you know, same for both these individuals, but it would be a bit different in terms of depending on the environment they were in. So if they were in an encouraging family, then they might, you might find the individual has a higher IQ and a general higher capability compared to if you were in a family that was not encouraging education and the like, then you might find IQ and general capabilities a bit lower than their potential. So again, the genes gives them a certain potential range for their things like IQ and, and general capabilities. And then the environment influences how much of that is actually expressed, how much it can be reached. Another example would be the exposure to carcinogens. What I mean by carcinogens is these are things that cause cancer, things that cause cancer. If you have two identical twins who are both you know, the same genes, you have one who lives maybe you know a normal lifestyle, doesn't smoke, so one is a no smoker and the other one is a smoker. These carcinogens, such as smoking, the chemicals in smoking, 
produce carcinogen, are carcinogens which cause cancer. So you might find, even though they have the same genes, the one who had no smoker one will not develop cancer. So he will stay healthy. He will not develop lung cancer. And the smoker himself might develop cancer. So he might develop cancer. Or is more likely to develop lung cancer. Might develop lung cancer. So again, even though their genes were identical, so these would be in a, twins. So even though their genes are identical, because they both were in different kinds of environments, one was a no smoker, so he was not exposed to carcinogens, or as many carcinogens, whereas the smoker was exposed to high levels of carcinogens. Therefore, their actual health outcomes are different as well. That's again how genes and environment, how they mix. I guess one easy example, which we'll actually go over in the next video, is in the plant example. What would happen if you have two plants? You know, you have seeds of two plants, maybe identical plants. You have seeds of two plants. And then you have, for one, you know, you, you give them normal amounts of sunlight and everything else, maybe enough water as well. Whereas the other one, you keep them in the darkness. But what you're going to see is you're going to see the one who has, you know, the ideal conditions. It might grow to its normal height. Its potential is gene, genetic potential height. Whereas the plant that has no exposure to light, because it needs light to produce sugar and to grow. The one that has no light might not grow at all. And that's showing you just a quick example again of how we can have the environment, enviro, I'm always struggling with spelling environment, environment, how the environment can actually affect the gene expression. So how much of that gene is actually expressed? Again, both these plants might have the same expression for growth. You know, they, they're meant to be identical. They may be self-pollinated. They are identical seeds. But the one is actually fully expressed. This grows as it should. Whereas the second one doesn't grow at all because it's not actually given the opportunity. It's not given the environmental resources it needs to grow. So I'll quickly go over the dot point again. It says outline, which means you state some basic facts. Outline ways in which the environment may affect the expression of a gene in an individual. We went over a couple different ways. We went over something like nutrition, how that can have a massive impact, for example, when it comes to growth. That our potential height might not be reached if we don't have enough food. An example was night. Second would be something like the family environment or generally the social environment. If you have an encouraging environment when it comes to, for example, education, then your genetic potential might be reached and you reach your potential IQ. Whereas if you have a family that discourages it, it might be, you know, you might not be able to reach that same IQ that you would otherwise. But yeah, for, for me, again, IQ, I don't want to say that IQ is genetic. I think we have, that's overstated a bit. But there is a small component where genes do obviously have some influence on like IQ, but overall in the environment has a huge influence on it. And then we said carcinogens, how you can have, if you expose to more carcinogens, that means you have more likelihood of causing cancer. If you expose less of it, that means you're less likely. And that's an example of how your genes, they might be all just as likely to have cancer. But if you expose to more carcinogens, that means you're going to have a high risk of cancer. So the environment influences your genes. And then your plant example, again, one seed has no sunlight, the other seed has, a, has sunlight. The seed that has sunlight will grow properly, and the one that doesn't have sunlight will not grow. The sunlight was the environment factor, and no environment, and not the correct environment, and the genes couldn't be expressed properly. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.